This is an old style expedition with a 21st century agenda. Ecologists, community groups and traditional owners have teamed up to explore every bend and twist of a unique waterway. Mary River, it's, you know, one of Australia's most amazing catchments, I think. You know, it's got a lot of special values, amazing concentration of threatened species that live in the river, fish, turtles, frogs. They're spending 10 days paddling the Mary River in southeast Queensland, covering nearly 200 kilometres. There's just such iconic species there that mean so much to so many different people that it's just about gathering all that energy and trying to focus it into one perspective. And that one perspective is ultimately about putting a value on the river in order to better protect it. We measure all structural assets, buildings and mines, yet we have this wonderful, beautiful country that we're not measuring our natural assets. So it's crucial that we actually start to do this. And at the end of each day, the expedition sets up nets in the river. Yep, try and go right up to the bank. You can fly every drone that you want or do every habitat assessment, but until you get in a canoe and paddle it and set some nets like we have been as well and start to sample what's in the river, that's when you truly start to understand what a river is and what a river needs. The next morning is not all good news. A reminder the river is under threat. So that's introduced to the catchment, not native? We're seeing more and more invasive fish species that are spreading throughout the river. But there's also a glimpse of the wondrous, an Australian lungfish. He's a good size. A juvenile one. The life cycle of the very young lungfish remains a mystery. So it's good to see a healthy juvenile. After measurements are recorded, Cubby Cubby man Kerry Jones returns the lungfish, known traditionally as Dala, to its home. It was the lungfish that helped stop the Mary River from being dammed 14 years ago. It's my intention to say no to Traveston Dam. The then Federal Environment Minister, Peter Garrett, found the proposed dam posed an unacceptable risk to the lungfish and other threatened species. So the river today is more valued than ever. It's quite unique in this part of Australia, this central eastern part of Australia, not to have a big dam. Ecologist Tom Espinosa is pleased to discover a healthy nesting bank for turtles. It's a very steep angle that the turtles like to approach on and they'll lay their eggs at variable heights. And of course along the way there's a lot of unwelcome discoveries as well. Uh, this whole area was flooded just 12 months ago. We would have been a couple of metres underwater 12 months ago and the scars from that flood are still clear to see. Tree clearing has even exacerbated the effect of those floods. I'm surprised at how good some of the habitat is and how bad some of the habitat is. It's been a real contrast and sometimes it's from waterhole to waterhole that you see that contrast. The biggest threat's already happened. There's been a lot of clearing and a clearing right up to the banks, which, you know, removes a riparian. The involvement of traditional owners is an essential part of the expedition. The trip takes in three indigenous nations. The Jinibara in the headwaters of the river on the Sunshine Coast hinterland, the Cubby Cubby in the middle, and the Butchula in the lower section where the Mary flows into the Great Sandy Strait. What's it like to work with the scientists here? It's cool. You also find out the systems that they, they can use so they can share information with other people. They were always connected in the past and what we're trying to do now is not only uh, reconnect them but also reconnect us. 
Good, my fella. Oh, they're all through here, look. Yeah. A site on the lower section of the river catches the interest of the butchler. This is where they would have just sharpened their spear, spears up. Yeah, I'm sure it's the same as Brine and flour and stuff like that. Did you know that site was there before? No. No, well, you know, like, uh, not recorded anywhere, you know. What we're doing right now is very, very special. We've seen some sites where, you know, open our eyes up and um, they get to see things that, you know, and walk in our old people's footsteps, so to speak. At another site, the Cubby Cubby have made their own discovery, a digging stick. Terence Watcho said it appeared after he visited a cave nearby, which connected him to his great-grandmother's country. I found it just up the road there. So it wasn't there yesterday. I come back and forward all day yesterday. Mm. It wasn't there. It may have been, you know, over 100 years since our people traversed um, down the river, you know, knowing that it's free old now. The river itself is filled with so many uh, significant material there, you know. As another day comes to an end, two more lungfish are recorded in the nets. It's one of the scales from the lungfish. It's quite a leathery sort of feel to it. As well as one of the iconic endangered species of the Mary. So that's a Mary River turtle, a big male, you can tell by the big tail. What gets measured gets monitored. What gets monitored gets valued. There's never been really a comprehensive assessment of where all the threatened species are or aren't in this catchment and its tributaries. Until now. Until now and hopefully in the next year.